Good morning, Eric Bollert. Hey, good morning. Oh, boy. Well, here we Yeah. What, where do we even start this morning, right, with this uh, voice message at the White House with the ad saying Democrats are for murder, <laughs> that they're if you get murdered by an illegal alien, it's because of the— I mean, it, this is just—and if you read any, you know, backstory of how this all happened, it's clearly all on Trump, right? I mean, he is just— uh, it, that that is the greatest thing is that they're obviously he's the worst negotiator ever. Well, the, you know, there was a piece uh, that CNN just put up on, on online about how they basically kept him. They try to keep him under wraps all weekend, right? He's supposed to be this master negotiator. He's supposed to be the one working the phone, and they basically were like, "Sit over here. We'll take your photo. We'll put out a photo." He was watching old clips of what did I see of, of his inauguration? Yeah, and, you know, and, they, and also old clips of him, uh, you know, calling Obama a failure for the shutdown because, oh, it's right. all on the president if this happens. I'm like, well, why they was... They kind of, like, put, put him in the corner and gave him the remote control to the DVR, and they're like, okay, just watch clips of yourself. We'll try to we'll try to do stuff over here. Yeah, I mean, wow. there's, there's so many, you know, talking points that, uh, that aren't really um, working for them, well, and, and the key one being, you know, he's this you know, master manipulator and negotiator, and, and, and people just kind of hate him, so it's hard for Democrats to negotiate him. But on right. a more on a more uh, concrete level, of course, they don't trust him, and Democrats don't, still to this moment, do not have a partner. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, in the, one of the most telling, uh, in the New York Times piece on this, one senior administration official who asked for anonymity, don't they all these mm-hmm. days, yeah. um, described an inexperienced president who genuinely wanted to reach a deal with Mr. Schumer when he called him to the White House on Friday, but Trump had not determined how it would play out or mapped out a strategy with Republican leaders or considered right. how the politics of a shutdown might uh, uh, unravel. I mean, this is like, once again, everything that we've read in Fire and Fury, he's just in totally over his head i mean right. I, I don't know how anyone bought the idea that someone has been bankrupt that many times is a great negotiator right right, right. and he hasn't filled key posts so it's he's you know a year later he still has this kind of skeleton crew and schumer you know the, the, the republicans say go talk to trump and he goes talk to talk to trump and and, and trump says go talk to mcconnell <laughs> and he's just like wandering back and forth between the white house and the capitol like what am i supposed to do yeah uh so i think they obviously made the right move look mcconnell and trump have lied about any kind of DACA dreamer deal for back in from September, certainly through December when they got 13 Democrats to vote for a spending bill specifically on the promise that McConnell would bring a dreamer uh, vote to the floor. Uh, so what are they supposed to do? I mean, it's all right. based on chaos now. If you don't, you know, it's all based on emergency deadline chaos. So if if the Democrats don't make them do that, they're never going to get a deal, and, and they know that. I love this part of the story. On Saturday, the president was left alternately uh, defiant and angry, self-pitying and frustrated, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> pretty much wandering enough. around the White House. Um, right. Yeah. I, I mean, but, you know, the thing you always talk about so well, Eric, is just how the press covers things, and there still is such a strong, like, oh, both sides are to blame right. kind of thing. That, that right. And you and I are sitting here going, they control all three branches of government. They, ha- you have Mitch McConnell saying, "I don't even know what the president wants. We'll be happy to do something when we know what he wants." I mean, a- how do you put any of this on the Democrats, right? Right, and and, and the press can't uh, point to a single poll that shows Democrats are to blame. There, there's been uh, a, this kind of a range of polls that show uh, Republicans are to blame, even from from five points all the way up to 20 points, which was the ABC poll, I think, late last week. I mean, how, if you're the press, do you look at that poll after poll after poll, common sense, uh, saying Republicans, just like every other shutdown, will be blamed, and then start typing, well, you know, maybe both sides are to blame. I mean, the Washington Post just did this piece today, you know, shutdown could blame Democrats running for re-election in red states. Yeah. Well, yeah. it could not, too. Right, yeah. You, and, I, and, and what about Republicans running for re-election in blue states? Could that hurt them? Right, Why right. aren't they writing those stories, you know? Well, yeah, uh, and by the way, uh, I think you tweeted something about that, too, about, you know, here's, I'm in L.A., Eric, with 600,000 people marching, yeah. hundreds of thousands of people marching all over the country in every major city. Millions, I think, yeah. I, well, yeah, millions, of course. I mean, you add them I meant, all up, yeah. I, yeah, I meant in every city, but I yeah, mean. Yeah, sure, no, right. But, I, you know, I, you, you barely see it, much coverage on that. And like you say, here they go again with the, hey, you know, some of these rural white people in West Virginia voted for, for 
Trump. Let's go do another story about that. Oh, uh, it's, it's unbelievable, right? New York Times, they had a photo of the rallies on the front page on Sunday. No front page article. They had one article on page 16, which was about 500 words and a bunch of photos. On, on the next page, they had a 900-word article about challenges the resistance movement faces. Yeah. Uh, after they uh, just produced, you know, one of the little, <laughs> the challenge, oh, we only got 600,000 people uh, in L.A. Look, you know, as I pointed out on Twitter, I mean, if millions of Tea Party people had ever marched against Obama, they never could find that many people to march against Obama. I mean, New York Times would have had to publish a special section. I mean, they would have had 18 pages of coverage. Let's let's start with, I mean, just the entire the, <sighs> That the, he was not legitimately elected, that we had all of these factors, and she still won by three million votes. There's, as you say, millions of people in the streets for a year now. It's not right. like this went away. And, no, I, and you're yeah, right, I, and now when there's a blue tsunami, they're going to be like, I don't, we don't understand where any of this came from. It's like, really? Right. And, and I think there was even more people marching yesterday than a year ago, which is, right. which is amazing, because you know, the, the, the talking point of the conventional wisdom was, well, you know, people are going to lose interest, and Democrats, you know, they don't do well on midterms, and, and people are going to go on with their lives. It's, it's the exact opposite. People are even more outraged. And look, there is an amazing ABC Washington Post poll this morning on the midterm uh, on the generic uh, ballot. Look, you know, I don't put 100% stock in this, and I'll wait until November, and I'm not being overly, you know, confident or any of that stuff. They have a 35-point, Democrats have a 35-point advantage wow. of women voters. That has grown by 20 points in two months. Yeah, that women women and independents. The yeah. charts. That mm-hmm. is they have a 14-point lead among likely voters, which has grown 12 points in two months. Uh, Democrats literally have never had a 14-point advantage among likely voters in a midterm election, even during the height of the you know Iraq War under Bush. So I mean, this stuff. It is amazing what's happening on the ground. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And once again, the press, you said, by the way, D.C. press completely letting the White House get away with this gross lie regarding the troops and the shutdown. I mean, I, that's the other thing is some of them are just such easily provable lies, right? Yeah, like, you know, and we might have talked about last week, but, you know, in, in 2013, Obama made sure to sign a bill uh, two days before that shutdown that made sure, you know, the troops, uh, got paid. Republicans have refused to do that. Uh, either you know they didn't think a shutdown was going to happen, or or whatever. Claire right. McCaskill on Saturday tried to introduce a bill to do what to make sure the troops got paid. Mitch McConnell shut her down, and every one of the Republicans goes on TV and lies and says you know Democrats shut down the government, and and that's why the troops aren't getting paid. Yep. Um, and and I'm you know I'm seeing very little pushback. I don't see pushback. You know, at the White House briefings, when Sarah Sanders talks about it, it, it is kind of uh, maddening. But in well, the end, uh, I still think Republicans are going to get yeah. the problem. The good news for us is the press missed the whole story in the you know in a, in a big part of what happened in 2016, and they're going to miss this whole story in 2018, it's right? Possible. It's very possible. Yeah. Yep. Flip the script. Eric, thanks so much. Talk to you next week, sir. Okay. Have All a right. great one. You too.